in Japan during the Edo period, there were books called Hinagarabon, and in those books you would have little black and white images, sometimes coloured, but usually black and white images like this, with a line drawing of the kimono, and then onto it the pattern would be drawn, and you would choose your kimono from there. And in the in the side the side of the book, it would have little notes on colour and and how the graphics are made and and how they're embroidered and things. It's a fantastic way to plan out how to how to decorate a kimono. You can see here I'm using my Procreate and um, you can you can mirror image what you're doing and make fantastical. This is um, I'm inspired by something Indian. But it's a great way to get it down and still if you were going to design a, um, a kimono in Japan on a piece of paper they would have a smaller size version of what they're going to do and sketch it out in pencil before then trialing it on on a um, larger piece of paper and then maybe a, a toile and then putting it onto the silk. Here I am, I'm mapping out the ivy that I saw on the walls near my house in Bristol and I wanted to, and planning out how the kimono, how the, this is a whole ori, not a kimono, but how it's going to look and then flipping it up so I can actually map it out to then put it onto paper to transfer it to the silk. So it's all about the planning and you can see here I go over and over again trying to work out how to decorate the back because it has to work in so many different I want it to work from the back I want it to work when it's all together where if you saw it from a different angle so I tried here on a little fashion illustration and it's about leaving empty space as well I, was, I, I really wanted there to be big a sort of a big patch of of empty space and you can see that so down the sides and like at the bottom of the sleeves this is me learning how to actually draw ivy it's so beautiful oh it was so beautiful these are pictures i took from around um the area where i was living at the time so it's about the planning first and i'm using my ipad i'm an illustrator so this is this is quite easy for me to to then work it all out and then i get to the paper so these pieces of paper they're from a big roll of paper you can see i've got my ipad there and they are the size of the pieces of silk so this again in japan this is what happens you have the the patterns can be placed under or on top of the silk and they're exactly their um life size and that's what this is and so i went around and just did little what is that is that a pentagram no, it's not a pen, but a pentagons um, to to place the leaves of the ivy, and you can see already there are a lot, <laughs> and that will kind of come out when I start to paint it. Oh, there were so many! Uh, <laughs> so I go through in a green pencil, and then I went over it again with a red pencil to actually get the shapes of each one, and 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 just. Well, again, it's just planning, isn't it? You're, you're over and over again, making sure you get it right. They're, they're all articulated the right way. They're not all facing the same way together. And they, each one has its, own, has its own balance and design. A very long process, so you can see here. Each one goes in. And then I have to go over them over and over again because... You can see I've, I've already worked out which, which way they're going to be pointing and now it's about getting the actual anatomy of the leaf in. Then I went over them with a black pen. So if those two ones, I did green and red because they're lighter colors and if I, I could go over them with something black and dark. So if I put this under a fabric, it will show through if I hold light under it. So if I put it under a white silk, one day i don't need this so i'm using red taffeta or burgundy taffeta but this is so it will go through a fabric so if i have a thinner fabric i can literally sit it underneath it and then trace the design onto onto the fabric in this case because i use a thicker taffeta that isn't see-through it's not um i got carbon paper 
and you you might remember carbon paper anyone who had typewriters in their house i never used them but my grandmother used to used to have a typewriter so we had all this carbon paper and you can see i've transferred the pattern with the carbon paper so it looks like chalk and i used a um it's it's a quilting little um pressing device it's it's sort of like the end of a needle or, or something like that and you press press down and, and i just trace over every leaf with that and, and imprint it onto the onto the silk and that took a while as well because you have to remember which ones you've done and, and that was a whole thing but look at that doesn't it turn out beautiful once this is me putting the um silver outlines so every single leaf was traced in a silver it's it's a gutter paint so it's also a resist so if you painted ink underneath this it would hopefully it would stop at the gutter um, and i went in with a silver metallic paint that on this fabric stops itself anyway the the it dries out it's quite a thick fabric it goes straight through and it doesn't spread too far but this certainly helped i could really get into the corners and do some amazing ombre little shading works into each into each point of the of the leaf on every single leaf i've kept this in this is just me tracing the the chalk outline of the pattern and you can see there's chalk on the actual silk and it, I, I say chalk it, it's from carbon paper so i'm guessing it's chalk like substance but you literally you just sort of hit the silk and it comes out and you don't see it anymore but i've kept all of this in because every single little leaf that you see had to i must have gone over every single leaf seven times to to sort of get it down onto the paper then get it onto the silk and trace it and then do the gutter and then i go through with the um with a little brush and actually paint every leaf as well oh it took so long it took nine months to make this but it, it is one of the most beautiful things i've ever done i absolutely love it and i've got it folded away nicely wrapped in silk and cotton in my in my closet um and I just get it out and look at it sometimes because it is absolutely beautiful. You can see here how I then came in with a silver paint and just painted the corners, but then let it shade. So all you see is the outline once you get to the center of the leaf. Oh, I'm still blown away every time I look at it myself. Look at that. Does exactly what I wanted it to. One of the things about kimono is they're made in a certain way their hands so this was the hand stitched as well that they fold at their seams like pages and this is how you store them so you don't ever press them because they're they're folded flat and they all then you hang them for a bit just to let it sort of all the anything drop out that needs to but i wanted it to be like this like a book so if you just open one sleeve it would be ravishing and then you open the whole thing and it's it's this ivy just hanging on the on a on a wall and then also if you turned it around and hung it up it could easily be a wall hanging it's um it really was a labor of love look at that isn't it when it turns over like that fantastic oh i hope you enjoyed watching this um and there's a i explain the actual the garment in a in the next video that that's coming up next where i actually explain how i how i made the garment but yeah it was, it was so much fun to do hand painted completely hand sewn because i didn't want to run a machine over all these beautiful paintings and, and it's so much easier to match everything up ravishing oh how beautiful I hope you like it.